Welcome to this week's Eternal Monday. Today we're going to look at a little bit more of the Eternal Format ban list. This is part four of the Eternal Format ban list explained. If you haven't seen the other three parts, definitely recommend you kind of jump back in and see some of those parts. Other cards are explained. Uh, but today we're going to focus on kind of two, more or less two different aspects of the ban list. So uh, first we're going to look at... Shaman EX. Shaman EX is, of course, banned in the expanded format, and that ban does carry over here to the eternal format. It also carries over to a card that is very similar to Shaman, uh, you see from Legends Awaken. So both these cards have the, uh, well, the ability and the poke power set up, which allows them to draw until they have six, or in Yuxi's case, seven cards in your hand. Unfortunately, both these cards are extremely potent, and there's no limit on how many of them you can drop each turn, which means you can pretty much burn through your whole deck with these cards. And with some of the cards that are legal in format for scooping up Pokemon, like Super Scoop Up, Super Up Cyclone, etc., you can pretty much just blow your whole deck in one turn and without any real punishment for that. So because of that, because it kind of just over-enables combos... Uh, it makes them very, very easy and, frankly, too easy to pull off. Both of these cards have been banned. And similarly, Detonate GX is also banned basically for the same reason. The difference is this does have the cap for being able to only use one each turn. However, because this synergizes so insanely well with the discard pile and is still a very, very potent draw card. It has also had to be hit because otherwise decks that rely on the discard pile just end up becoming far too strong. Dead and AGX makes it way, way too easy to execute discard pile strategies in the internal format. And so Dead and A was banned alongside Shaman and Yuxi. Of course, I uh, talked about legal scooping combos, uh, partly because Scoop Up Net has been banned in the uh, Eternal format for quite some time now. Um, it actually was just recently banned in the expanded format. Uh, frankly, I should, think it should have been banned quite a while ago. But uh, it is banned in the Eternal format pretty much because it breaks any card prior to Black and White and many cards after the Sword and Shield era. Just being able to scoop up a Guard War EX for nothing effectively makes this just way too powerful unfortunately the phrasing on this card is such that it just it's a little too strong if it were only pokemon without a rule box it would be better but it still would be broken in eternal because pokemon prior to black and white do not have rule boxes according to official rulings so even old EXs and such would be able to be reused and would unfortunately also break scoop up net. So because this card is just kind of worded for a very specific block, uh, it's just broken when it's outside of that block. And that has, that has caused it to be banned and expanded as well as eternal. Up next, we're going to kind of break away from that a little bit uh, is chaos gym. This card is mostly banned just because it's unfun. It's it's very strong hand control in... In fact, I'm going to read this card because if you're not familiar with this card, you're going to be like, I don't understand what's going on here. So it says, whenever a player plays a trainer card other than a stadium card, they flip a coin. If heads, that player plays that card normally. If tails, the player can't play that card. If the card isn't put into play, the player's opponent may choose that to use that card instead if they do everything required in, in order to play that card, like discarding cards. Either way, the card goes back to its owner's discard pile. So basically, you have a 50-50 shot of using any card in your hand, and your opponent gets to play that card if you flip tails. It's just kind of stupid, frankly. Uh, it's a little too much, and it makes, just kind of like the baby rule we talked about, I think it was part one, it just makes everything very coin flippy for no real reason, and this is one of the situations where like technically maybe it's fine because your opponent has a chance to use the card, but really it's just not fun to play with in the format and decks or pretty much any deck that would want to be competitive would have to play this uh, or, or play something that would deal with this very well. Like <clears throat> Calyx. Well, uh, it's just, it's, it's less than ideal to have a card like this in format. And because it is, Frankly, just unfun. It's been pulled from the format by ban. And then, speaking of extraordinarily unfun cards to deal with, we have Dark Vile Bloom. This is the most powerful trainer lock in the entire game, as far as I can tell. Uh, it is just a blanket no trainer cards. So people complain about Vile Plume today from in the expanded format with Ancient Origins, 
Uh, but or, or in like Legacy, for example, with the und Undaunted Vile Plume. This one just straight up says no trainer cards whatsoever. So whereas Ancient Origins Vile Plume would allow you to play anything that's not an item card, so you could still play tools, you could play supporter cards, you could play stadium cards. Dark Vile Plume says no to all of those. There is no trainer cards you could play. And unfortunately, that's especially problematic because pretty much all of the counters to Dark Vile Plume, or at least anyone's any that would be reasonably viable in the eternal format are all trainer cards. So stuff like um, cessation crystal, which would shut off hay fever. You can't play because it's a trainer card, which basically just means dark file plume becomes uh, extraordinarily potent. And then in combination with other effects like uh, ability lock, for example, you pretty much are lot left with no way to gust it up, no way to get rid of it. Uh, you'd be manually attaching each turn and it, and because this doesn't have to be in the active spot, your opponent can be really wailing on you and you won't be able to set up. Now, to be fair, your opponent is also locked out of trainer cards with Dark Vile Plume. So it was similarly to uh, that, similarly to both the, the Vile Plume I mentioned earlier, they can't use those cards either, but they just do what they want. And then once they're set up, drop Vile Plume and you're locked. Uh, it's just, it's a little too much for not nearly enough um, effort is what it comes down to. It's actually interesting too, because there was a similar card that was legal in Eternal for quite a while uh, and it had to be hit. It's been about a year ago now. Uh, it was actually Houndoom from Unseen Forces. Very similar card, even a little bit more to have to do. It is a stage one instead of a stage two and you had to have um, a smaller bench basically than your opponent. But it didn't lock you too, which made it very, very potent also. And similarly to Dark Vile Plume, uh, Houndoom locked most types of trainer card out, except support cards, which was like its main thing. But unfortunately, it too was just way too strong and it was warping the format to uh, an excessive degree. So it got hit also. Anyway, after Houndoom, we have one of the most obvious bands, I think, in the entire format, but it is something that's worth noting. For players that may not be understand why a card like this might be problematic. So Broken Time Space is a stadium card that says each player may, may evolve a Pokemon that they played or evolved during that turn. Unfortunately, Broken Time Space and another card here, uh, Forest of Giant Plants. These are both stadium cards that make it very easy to pull off combos that would normally be much more difficult to pull off. And uh, things like Shiftry from uh, his next destinies, for example, where you do coin flip and, and put your opponent's Pokemon back into their hand, things like that. These, these combos that should require a specific amount of effort and don't because of cards like these just break the game. And it's interesting to note too, Broken Time Space would have been perfectly fine during its era, uh, or, or at least reasonably fine during its era, but uh, it just isn't outside of it. Uh, the power of evolution Pokemon and especially of stage two evolution Pokemon is such that they, uh, with access to broken time space, or if they're grass types access to forage force of giant plants, they just make it so that nothing else can function, right? If you're not throwing massive locks and, and tricks around with your stage two Pokemon, you're probably not bothering to play, uh, anything but big basics. And then similarly, uh, Boost Shake is also banned for a similar reason. All three of these cards enable turn one combos going first, so you don't actually have to have a, a turn of attacking turn or a turn of waiting to evolve. These all allow you to attack, or not attack rather, but to, to, um, to set your Pokemon up, set up all these locks, turn one. You can get your Garbotoxin off turn one. You can get your, your Trevenant off turn one. You can get all these combos and, and locks off before your opponent even has a chance to play the game. And so for that reason, all three of these cards were hit by the ban list. And then finally, two more cards that people have kind of wished were banned in, well, at least the, this one that's legal in uh, Expanded right now. People kind of wish would be banned in Expanded. They are Wally and Wally's Training. They're basically the same effect, very similar effect at the very least. Um, they do effectively the same thing uh, where you're able to evolve a Pokemon that was just put into play. So this is especially potent for uh, re-enabling a combo. So theoretically, right, you are able to break a combo, 
uh, or, or to break some sort of oppressive Pokemon, like let's say Trevenant or um, Garbatoxin. Those are fairly tame examples, honestly, but, but either way, they're, they're examples. In theory, your opponent would need to have another Phantom to evolve up into another Trevenant, and then would have to wait a turn if they didn't have it already out. So there's a way to slow down their 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 lock right if you can knock a couple of them out in a turn that's even better because then they they have to struggle to find another one wally and wally's training both make it possible to get a pokemon out on that same turn and immediately put that lock back in place so counterplay is much reduced from where it should be and because there again there are so many extraordinarily strong evolution pokemon in the format Cards like Wally -E and Wally's -E training just make it a little too easy to do the things that you would want to do uh, in terms of locks, which is unfortunate because these are both very cool cards. And the restriction on the first turn player uh, not being able to play a supporter card would have helped. Um, but there's just too much, too much very strong evolution Pokemon, uh, or too, too, too many rather that uh, that make Wally -E and Wally's -E training. A little too potent for the format. It's actually very interesting to see that Wally -E hasn't gone away in Expanded again, because it's kind of become a bit of a problem uh, in Expanded as well, enabling uh, Pokemon like Retro Jacob V-Star to be quite potent even on their first turn. But that is it for today's look at the Eternal Format ban list. Uh, as always, uh, you can learn more about the Eternal Format at justinbasil.com slash eternal. Uh, it's a very, very fun format. If you haven't already, you should absolutely jump into the Discord and uh, play some games against people on sites like Untap or PGCG Sim. People are always willing and able to play games, friendly games against other people. It's just a super, super fun format to play. But that's all for me today. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Look at some of the cards on the Eternal Format ban list, and we'll see you in the next one.